I'm at the Trinov, uh, let's see, what have we got? <laughs> I'm at the uh, Trinov, Trinov, Officina Acoustica, Ascendo, Ascendo Kaleidoscape, Advia. But most of all, I'm standing here with uh, Arno Laboria from Trinov. Arno is, I guess, the brains trust of Trinov, the man who's done all of the research, all of the science, and I guess probably the lead behind this waveforming, right? Maybe we should talk about waveforming, what, what it is. Waveforming is, is really a breakthrough technology. It's a complete different way of considering the low frequency control. It's really a, a radically different approach because a lot of audio technology, they rely on signals and signal processing like loudspeaker signals or microphone signals. But really with waveforming, what we want to control is the acoustic field. So we really want to control the acoustic waves. So how the wave propagate in the room. And uh, we really want to like uh, produce the sound wave in a very specific way that is matching the, the room so that the wave can really travel the room in the, in the optimal way. And you can steer it. And we can we can uh, steer the, the the waves. We can uh, use the room as a waveguide, and we can absorb the wave, or we can uh, uh, redirect. And uh, but really, the fundamentally, the objects that we are manipulating are sound waves, and it's very different from signals, because basically, signal you have you know the time domain mm -hmm. and the frequency domain. So you have two domain and two dimension time frequency, but when you deal with acoustic waves, you have the three dimension of space, you have time, so you have four dimensions, mm -hmm. but you also have the frequency, and you have all, let's say, the spatial frequency, frequencies like the wavelength, and so you have basically uh, four domains and eight dimensions. Yeah. So the complexity is, is, is uh, radically different. So. Will this be something that the current Trinov can process? Uh, yes. Okay. And how do you measure this? Do you still use the Trinov mic or is it a different process? It, it's, uh, yeah, it's still the Trinov mic. Right, yeah. And the Trinov mic is a 3D microphone. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But it's, uh, it can an analyze the, the acoustic waves, but for short wavelengths. Mm. But here we, we deal with very low frequencies, so it's long wavelength. Mm. So basically we have to create a 3D microphone mm. using multiple points. So multiple positions. Room, multiple yeah. positions. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's more than just multiple positions. It's really a way to capture the acoustic field. Mm. Okay. And what we're trying to analyze is how the waves are propagating in the space and not only capture points. It, it, it's really the, the sound waves that we want to capture yeah. and, and not the points. And that's probably where is the biggest uh, breakthrough and the technology. How long, you know, if we as a user are able to put waveforming in a customer's room, how much time would we need once the hardware is in? So for the calibration or the setup process, how long do you think that might take? Yeah, yeah. well, it's typically one hour, 90 minutes. Oh, that quick? Yeah. It's, well, I would not call this not quick, <laughs> but it, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not several days or it's just to collect enough uh, data to correctly understand the, the acoustic field mm. uh, without ambiguity. Mm. And uh, typically we need like 20 microphone points. And 20, 30 maybe. And will this run like a wizard, a bit like the original calibration? That's uh, a layer that will come. Yeah. So at the moment there is no wizard. Yeah. But that's part of the technology rollout. So the elements will uh, will come one after the other, and we will uh, open the technology to a wider and wider audience okay. as it gets uh, more, let's say. Uh, mature and, and ready to be used by... Uh... Is there a limit on room size? I'm thinking in, in terms of very small rooms. Uh, I was in a recording studio recently and they had a lot of bass problems. Can waveforming be used in a very small room? Yeah, that, that's the goal. I mean, in, in a way we could say that the, the smaller the room, the, the better the more is, effective uh, it is. Is, is waveforming. And uh, because in very small rooms, we need a very limited number of, uh, of subwoofers. Like if 
if the room is uh, like typically four meters wide, so I don't know how it translates in, in feet, but... Uh, oh, I don't know feet. Ah, okay, perfect. So four meter wide, yeah. uh, you need two uh, subwoofers yeah. in the front. Yeah. If the ceiling is not too high, yeah. if the ceiling is uh, higher than two meters fifty, let's say, uh, four subwoofers. So really the, the number of subwoofers is a function of the room width and height. So in small rooms, you need a smaller number of uh, okay. Of and how does this work with, you know, is there any issues with things like Dolby standards or anything like that? Does this in conflict or impact or work with those standards? No, no, it's not. Uh, there, there's no conflict because yep. the, the, the the ultimate goal is to reproduce the low frequencies yep. in the best possible way mm. without having the negative impact of the room yep. that is creating the all the resonances, the, the long decay that is producing a, a muddy sound and mm. confused. Mm. And uh, all the problem with the, the seat to seat uh, consistency Variation. variation that, that all of that is resolved by uh, waveforming. So it's not a, a conflict at all yeah. with the different formats. It's, it's a benefit. And what about obstacles in the room, the risers and seats? If you can waveform left and right, can you waveform uh, yeah. vertically as well? Uh, and, and how does that work? Yeah, with yeah, yeah that's um, yeah. In, in fact, you, you can see that the the waveforming is is uh, in a way creating a wavefront mm. that is matching the room. So because we we measure the acoustic field in the room, so we capture all the imperfections. Uh, introduced by the seats, by the, the, the tiered seatings, the fact that the, the room is not an ideal shoebox, the acoustic of the room is not symmetrical, like very probably you have a concrete floor, but the ceiling is probably not concrete, so it's not, it's not symmetric. Yep. And uh, waveforming is handling all these uh, characteristics mm. of the room, and is producing the wavefront that, that is matching the room so that it, the, the wavefront can travel the room in the, in the most efficient way. And same for the absorption at the back. So we absorb based on the room characteristic so that what makes uh, waveforming very different from other uh, approaches. The technology will uh, have a different iteration and evolution and I really believe that uh, there is at least five to ten years of uh, evolution so that's the beginning of something mm. and we want to introduce the, this technology as the, the top solution and it will be introduced through selected partners who will be trained and be able to implement the technology in the, the, let's say the most effective way. It's interesting because, you know, I've had some customers talk to me about it and they sort of get a bit confused about the idea of multiple subwoofers and they keep saying that, you know, uh, base, uh, a base wavefront is a radical new idea and I'm like, well, actually, if you've heard thunder strike, then from a long distance away, then you've been hit by a base wavefront, right? But this one is a wavefront generated by multiple subwoofers that can move and be steered through the room, correct? Yes. And then that takes out the room mode problems. So now everybody gets good bass and uh, we can get nice, punchy, responsive bass in all areas of the room. Is that correct? Yes, that, that's correct. How long have you been working on waveforming? Uh, six years. Six years. And obviously, you know, uh, it's sort of really coming to prominence this year. When do we think we'll see the software in the Trinov? Yes. So, well, it's, it's already in the, in the Trinov. Yep. So we are, okay. we are running a, a beta software, yep. but we did all the calibration and, yep. uh, and, uh, and it's running in the unit. Um, and you're demonstrating that here now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll, we're coming back. I think we've got a time booked. I'm look, looking forward to hearing it. I did hear it in Adelaide at Cricks, mm -hmm. and it was pretty impressive. We recently released a subwoofer placement guide. Yep, yep, I've and got that. Yes, yep. okay. So here we are really using a high number of subwoofers because we want to show the, the maximum capability of the, of mm -hmm. the technology, mm -hmm. but we are not using the 
the, all the 12 and 12 subwoofers. We are also doing demonstration with only three yep. subwoofers yep. at the front and, and two so, yeah. at the back. So it's five, it's yep. a lot, but yep. it's much more reasonable than uh, 12 plus 12. Yeah. No, well, most of our room designs, we use four subwoofers already. Yeah. So to go to one more subwoofer and then be able to switch to waveforming yes. seems to be a big advantage. Look, I know you're busy. I won't keep you much longer. I really yeah. appreciate you talking to us. Yeah. I can't Thank wait you to for hear your time. And, uh, no, yeah. you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Appreciate Thank it. You.